Hello and welcome to the learning square. In this tutorial we will talk about the data frames in R. So we construct data frames, we read data sets. Now data frame is basically the most natural way to store data sets. Now suppose I want to create a data frame or a table in which I want to store the marks of a class. So I will start by variables. So I'll have vectors first. So I have A which is for five students. These may be the roll numbers. Then I have names of these students, so I'll just use, so I basically have five students, it could be A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D and E, E. So I have this vector stored in B, which is a character type now. And then I could have C, which could store the marks of these students, so they will be 55, 69. Now suppose I want to create a data frame for these three vectors, so I can just maybe name my data frame as cmdf class marks data frame and I have this data dot frame command which is inbuilt and I just simply give the vectors that I want to compose my data frame of. Remember that the length of all the vectors should be the same. So I can view my data frame. So this is how it is created and I can check the class which is a data frame. Now suppose I want to name these. So first I'll check the names of the data frame that I have. So the default names are the values given to these vectors. Now suppose I want to rename so I can say names cmdf and I'll give a string here for roll number second could be the names and the third could be marks. And when I view this the names have been assign. The other ways of renaming so I could have used something again cmdf and I could have said or maybe I'll say cmdf1 to be able to construct another data frame and I say data dot frame and I could have given the names here itself. Rule number equals a name equals b and marks is equal to c. So once I have done this again I have this here and you can see roll number, name and marks. This is another way I can name my columns. I have again something called edit cmdf which will open the row editor and I could change the variable names here. Now once this is done then I have some inbuilt commands which I can just apply on these data frames. So cmdf I apply the number of rows will be got from n row and call will return the number of columns in the data frame. So I had three columns, five rows. The dimensions could be returned using dim which is a five by three. I have another command called row names. So my row names basically tell me the names of the rows which have not been assigned. These are default values right now. Now I have certain inbuilt data frames or data sets which are available. So I could just see them using library. I could say help equals data sets. This would open the package data sets and these are all the packages which are available for me to practice and read data sets. So you could just try them. The most common one here is the iris one. So we may just see I may say df and I read iris into this data frame because I don't want to change the original data frame of iris. Now if I want to view this, you can see this is basically a data frame which consists of details of 150 observations. So I have 150 flowers, sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width with the species of the iris flower have been recorded. So this data set, if I want to do certain operations, I can do it even on the data set which I create. But since it's a small database which we had data set which we had created, we'll use this one rather. So I can say head df which tells me by default the first six values of the data set. So I have all these values for the first six elements by default. If I want lesser or more, I have an option of using n. I could have specified three and it will give me just the three values. Then I have another command here called tail. I could use it on the df, it will give me the last six values. I can again use the n parameter to be able to change the last values viewed. 
you can see the class for this particular data frame is again a data frame now suppose I want to retrieve then I can use the square brackets to be able to retrieve values out of this data set so I want to retrieve maybe the second row so you can s just remember that my indexing starts from 1 and across the rows it goes it goes like this and it starts from 1 here and across the columns it goes like this so if I want to retrieve this value it's basically second row and second column so if I say df 2 comma 2 it will give me 3 if I want to say see maybe this value it would be fourth row third column so 4 comma 3 would return me 1.5 if I go beyond this so I know that my data frame has 150 values so maybe I want hundredth and I have five values so anything beyond five six would give me a null now I can also retrieve the data frame values so if I want suppose the entire value so I want to retrieve the second row completely so I'll just specify the row number and I want it for all the columns so I just give df and all the values are retrieved the sepal length sepal width you can see it here the second values are here give it to me if I want maybe all the values for a particular column so I want maybe the third column so I want all the petal lengths so you can see all these 150 values are got and these have been numbered for convenience the first one is this the tenth one is this and so on so 145th and then I have the 150th value and you can see that the value returned is you know vector form now if I want I can also retrieve values from this data frame using the names of the columns so I suppose I want the sepal dot capital length remember R is case sensitive and I want to retrieve the species this has to be in inverted commas so you can see here this is returned I have all the values that is 150 rows and I have the columns sepal length and species given to me I can check the class of this so it's a data frame remember that whenever we extract more than one columns then the value is stored in a data frame now I have another command called summary summary for any numeric value will return me these six values which is the minimum maximum first quartile the third quartile median and the mid of these numeric values wherever I have categorical var variables it will tell me the number of categories for each and every it will tell me the number of values for each and every category that I have so here I have set of 50 and so on and in case I have a boolean table here so boolean would be true and falses then again it will tell me the number of trues and falses available in this particular data frame so that's the summary then I have I can retrieve the structure of this using str and it gives me the structure you could run all of these commands for your own data frames that you create so this brings us to the end of this lecture i will see you in the next one thank you